This is a Squeeze podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Hello and welcome to Squiz Kids Today, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Amanda Bauer and it's Thursday, December 8. In Squiz Kids Today, not-so-little prints uncovered in Queensland, a pricey old guitar, a crazy kids versus adults challenge and the ultimate eSports flex. That's what's making news kids style. The Lowdown. A group of Queensland women who call themselves the Rock Chicks because they hunt for fossils in their spare time, has unearthed a 100 million year old fossil in their backyard. Their discovery of a six metre long Elasmosaurus on a cattle station in remote Queensland is causing a lot of excitement among paleontologists, which of course is a fancy word for scientists who study fossils. Now, an elasmosaurus is not a dinosaur. It's a plesiosaur, which is an extinct type of marine reptile that lived from 66 million to 215 million years ago. The word marine means sea, and cattle country Queensland is most definitely not marine. Well, that is true. Now... But millions of years ago, a massive inland sea covered what we now know as a very hot and dry place. And that sea was filled with prehistoric sea monsters. The elasmosaur has been called Little Prince in honour of Cassandra Prince, one of the rock chicks who owns the cattle station where Little Prince was found. A four-person team of experts excavated the site and were thrilled to find that the Little Prince is the first elasmosaur in Australia found with its skull still attached to its body. That's because elasmosaurs had really, really really long necks. Their necks were almost half the length of their entire bodies. And so after a hundred million years or so buried under rocks and dirts, elasmosaur skulls have usually detached from the neck and often been crushed. The great thing about finding this complete fossil skeleton is that it can help scientists understand not just how the prehistoric creature was put together, but how it moved, what it ate and more. That's why the elasmosaur find has been likened to something called the Rosetta Stone. That is a big piece of rock with three ancient languages carved into it, including Egyptian hieroglyphics. Until the Rosetta Stone was found in 1799, no one knew what hieroglyphics meant. But the stone finally allowed researchers to translate them. Similarly, this fossil could help scientists identify and understand other fossil fragments in their collections. I'll put a link in your episode notes to photos of the fossil, and for those who want to dig deeper, I'll put in some information about the Rosetta Stone and plesiosaurs. Experts say that we are living in a golden age for fossil hunting. So, kids of Queensland, I know what you can do this summer. Those of you paying close attention yesterday might have noticed that Bryce released two podcasts, the second being a special episode in which he chatted with Australia's e-safety commissioner, Julie Inman-Grant, about media literacy. You know, the stuff that Squizzy the Newshound talks about every week, sniffing out information, not falling for online scams, that kind of thing. The eSafety Commission has its own special campaign called Mighty Heroes, and those heroes are working together with Squizzy to help keep kids safe online. If you missed it yesterday and you're listening on a podcasting app, the chat should run immediately after this episode. Otherwise, I'll put a link in your episode notes. Spin the globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a news story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in France, where a very old guitar, believed to have once belonged to the Queen of France, is expected to fetch more than $100,000 at auction later this week. Now you might be wondering, why spend $100,000 on an old guitar when you can get a really good brand new one for much less? 
Well, many professional musicians believe that old instruments have a rich, special sound. Yo-Yo Ma, one of the world's best cellists, plays a $2.5 million 1733 Stradivarius cello. And an anonymous person recently spent $16 million on a violin made in 1741 and then loaned it to American Anne Akiko Myers for the rest of her life. That makes $100,000 for an old guitar seem like a bargain. Pop Culture Corner. I want you to imagine that you and 99 of your friends have been issued a challenge. You can win half a million American dollars, that's 747,000 Australian dollars, if you can beat 100 adults in a competition. The competition is this. You'll spend 100 hours living inside a giant cube with the other kids. There's a toilet and you'll get some food and sleeping bags. A second giant cube has 100 parents, one parent per kid, spending 100 hours under the same conditions. At different times over the 100 hours, you'll all be given opportunities to leave if you can't handle it. Do you think there will be more adults or kids remaining at the end of the 100 hours? Who do you think would be most likely to fall for tricks to get them to leave? That's what the number one trending video on YouTube right now is all about. It's a challenge set up by YouTuber Mr. Beast, and if you have 15 minutes to spare, it's pretty interesting viewing. I won't spoil who wins the challenge, but I do think you're going to have some good conversations about it. And Squizzy the Newshound has a challenge for you. While you're watching, see if you can figure out how Mr. Beast is able to give away so much money. Does he have ads in the video? Promotions? Spaced out. A big brash challenge has been issued by the Space Force branch of America's military to its competitors in a video game tournament. Yep, you heard that right. Esports teams from the US Air Force, the British Army, the US Navy and more play Call of Duty against each other every year in a tournament that raises money for military veterans. For the last two years running, the winners of the tournament have been US Space Force, which is in charge of protecting America's interests in space. And so, to promote the next tournament, which gets underway on Friday the 16th, Space Force has made a video that includes real footage of the trophy in space with, come and get it, scrawled at the base. That's right, Space Force's trophy was actually launched into space to make the video. Talk about a flex. And yes, of course, it's in your episode notes. Hear that? That's the clock ticking really loudly on our Christmas charity campaign with Lego. You know the one where for every Lego build a Squiz Kid does and shares to Instagram, tagging at Squiz Kids and using the hashtag build to give, the good people at Lego will donate a Lego set this Christmas to a family in need. Today is your last chance to show the world how generous Squiz Kids can be. The more we build, the more joy we bring this Christmas. We're currently at 340, an impressive 60 builds more than two days ago. But let's put in one last huge effort and push it up to 500 before tomorrow. That's when Bryce will reveal the final number and the names of the three prize-winning kids who created the three best builds. And if you don't know what to make, how about making a present for someone this festive season or some Christmas decorations? Lego tells me that their research shows one third of kids like to get crafty for Chrissy. So if that's you, get on it. I'll put a link in your episode notes to a little online tutorial on how to create adorable Lego present boxes. And if you're thinking to yourself, I already did, Amanda, remember that you can enter as many times as you like with different builds. How many things can you make after school today? How many lives can you bring an extra sparkle to this Christmas? Just remember to tag us at Squiz Kids and add the hashtag build to give. I've put details in today's episode notes. Stay tuned for tomorrow's big reveal. 
time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What is the nickname given to the elasmosaur found in Queensland? Yeah, it's the little prince. Question number two. What are different branches of the military doing next week to raise money for veterans? Yep, they're playing a video game tournament. And question number three. Who do you think would last longer stuck inside a giant cube with 99 other people, one portable loo and pretty bad food? You or your parents? Yeah, well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Shout outs. It's December 8, the anniversary of the death of the Beatles' John Lennon and the birthday of rapper Nicki Minaj. It's also a special day for these Squiz kids celebrating a birthday today. Chloe from Cannon Hill, Pranavi from Croydon, Cooper from Appen, Miller from Park Orchards, Sia from Canberra, Amber from Quirindi, Isla from Exeter, Zoe from Otford, Jack from Ivanhoe, Eloise from East Geelong, Ellie from Geraldton, Anira and Miranda from Dandenong, and Archie listening from West Vancouver. And a belated birthday shout out goes to another Archie from Wingara. Classroom shout outs go to Class 3, 4B and Mrs. Brazer at Taralba Primary School, Class 4 Ghostbusters and Ms. Garvin at Glenbrook Public School, Class 4J and Mrs. Kingsley at Kingsley's Home School, currently travelling around Australia, Class 6TF at Clairvaux Catholic School in Belmont, Class 5-6 ENG with Mr. Sonnefeld and Ms. Kotsiris at Dandenong South Primary School, Class 3 Red and Miss Vanderzee at Bethany Catholic Primary School in Penrith, and finally to Year 1 at St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Primary School in Paddington and a big thank you to all the Year 1 teachers for getting through a normal school year. Don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout out, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au or fill out the form on our website. And a quick note to you on classroom shout outs. We've only got six podcasts left in the year and over 120 classroom shout outs and counting in the Squiz Kids mailbox queue. We'll do our best to get through as many as possible before the podcast wraps up on December 16. But if we don't, accept our apologies and get in touch next year. That's all we have time for. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids today. We'll be back again tomorrow. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent day. Over 